La Jolla is well known as a hub for San Diego's cutting edge biotech industry, scientific researchers, and facilities. And a good case could be made that it all started with Jonas Salk. My guest, Suzanne Bourgeois, is the founding director of Salk's Regulatory Biology Lab and the author of a new book, Genesis of the Salk Institute, The Epic of Its Founders. She's here with me now with a snapshot of the world's most famous, or I should say a world famous institute. Welcome. Thank you very much. Now, Suzanne, in your book, you express this excitement of being part of brilliant and passionate uh, group of, of researchers and scientists at Salk back in the 1960s, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. What made this group of scientists uh, so special? Well, they were extraordinary, and of course they were all celebrities, but some stood out as more than just scientists. For example, Leo Szilard. Leo Szilard held the patent on the atomic bomb, and so that's uh, that was a very special character. He was also, of course, interested later in biology. He was a physicist. And so several of the founders were physicists. And actually, the, the idea was to study bio biology and human diseases at the level of molecules. And the physicists are, are really at the origin of one molecular biology. Along with Jonas Salk, Along, this, this yes. wide range of yes. physicists and, and other uh, scientists there. That's right. Now, you write in your book that when La Jolla was chosen, as the site for the institute, it was a relatively unknown or little known location at the time. Of. Yeah, people couldn't pronounce the name, you said. Yeah. Why choose such a, a prime, gorgeous spot overlooking the ocean for what some would say are laboratories? Well, <laughs> Jonas, had, Jonas just fell in love with the site. Uh, Roger Ravel is the one who invited Jonas so to come and look at the place. And Jonas had no intention of coming to this unheard of place. He wanted to go to Stanford, which was a very well-known campus. So when Jonas came, it was just to eliminate this La Jolla place from, from the list of possibilities. And then he fell in love with the site, uh, which was adjacent to, UC, to what was going to be UCSD, of course. And UCSD did not exist yet. So that, that was, he really fell in love with the place. And, and it, it's really just such, such a modern building uh, and yes. just a state of the art uh, back then and remains so today. Why is it important for you to tell the story of how Salk began? Uh, well, I think it's, uh, it tells a lot about what it takes to build a place, a successful place, a prominent place like the Salk Institute 50 mm -hmm. years ago. What did it take? It took, of course, a lot of, uh, courage to just join in because it was La Jolla was unheard of, uh, the Sorg Institute did not exist, there was no building, there was no, no faculty, no trustees. So it took a, a lot of uh, risk, it was a risk-taking uh, enterprise. Visionary and uh, risk -taking, you had to it be visionary like. to accept that. Now I know moving forward to today you write that the National Institutes of Health now want to know which drugs work on a disease rather than why they work, which was the previous case. Does that threaten basic research? Well it's hard to tell. It's certainly the attitudes have certainly changed and that's because of patenting. So uh, now that everything can be patented uh, there is money issues involved, there is secrecy, the, the, the exchange of information between scientists is not as open as it used to be. You go to a meeting and people don't tell you their latest result because they're afraid to be scooped. So it's a very different attitude from it, what it was when I was you know, in, in the science uh, uh, 50 years ago. Uh, indeed, so, and I, I believe, Jonas, the, the idea was, you know, science for humanity, not for exactly, maybe a patent. Exactly. So. Um, how has the Salk Institute influenced other research facilities? Not that much, I believe, because simply the Salk Institute is a very small place. The, the principles are small size, freedom, and flexibility. And there are very few research institutes that are that small, but a small place standing up by itself like that is, is very important. It's a, it's a good example, a case in point, but it's, it's unusual. Do you think it's a cornerstone for our biotech industry? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here's and it's, it's fairly unique. So to say that it has influenced many other places, it's unique. And uh, it's great, of course. So it has, all right. <laughs> Suzanne uh, Bourgeois, author of The Genesis of the Salk Institute, The Epic of Its Founders, thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Petit.